So I have a problem. <laughs> As of filming this video today, I am still seven books behind schedule of my reading goal for the year, which is 150 books, which I've never managed before in my life. <laughs> Delusion. <laughs> Convince yourself. And for some reason I thought it would be a good idea to set that as my goal this year, and then I had a shitty first couple months this year, and I didn't read as much as I needed to. So we're seven books behind schedule, and I want to fix it. <laughs> so I decided I wanted to do a video where I read seven books in seven days. To get, well, to get caught up to it, we'd probably still be like one or two books behind schedule, because I'll ex be expected to read books this week, so we won't get entirely caught up, but at least we'll get close, because I've been kind of hovering around like seven, eight or nine books behind schedule for the past couple weeks. I just want to like get through it in one fell sweep. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. I thought to myself, I can't just read seven random books in seven days. Like I have to have something decide how I read. Right? right? It's, it's me. It can't be easy. <laughs> So what I decided to do is we're going to be participating in a readathon <laughs> every day and one of their prompts or some of their prompts or however that readathon particularly works is going to be deciding what we read. And I'm so excited! <laughs> I was speaking actually recently on a podcast I do over on my Patreon about how I miss readathons because they're difficult for me to always participate in because I've got so many other things going on in my own content. But if I was just a viewer of YouTube, I would be obsessed with readathons. Like, I think they're the most fun thing ever, and I'm sad I can't participate in them more. So, we're gonna be like kind of going through some of the ones I wish I had participated in, or wish I was currently participating in, and doing like a whistle stop tour of them, essentially. Now, three books that I definitely wanna try and make sure I get to in this vlog are Pet, The Woods Are Always Watching, and Over the Woodward Wall, because these are three books that are still on my TBR, Cluedo TBRs. I think they're the only physical physical books I haven't read. I've got two other audiobooks, but we're not going to worry about them in this vlog. I'll get to them at some point. Once I've read these, I'm pretty much caught up with all my previous month's TBR Cluedo, and that stress is off my, off my back. So I want to try and fit these in. They're all pretty short. I think like between 200 and 250 pages. Today I'm actually quite busy. You think it's, oh, it's Sunday today, everyone. It's Sunday. <laughs> Fuck, it's a Sunday. And you'd think I'd have a lot of time, because I'm not working today, which is pretty rare. But I'm actually going out for a long walk now with Tom's family. And then I've got a movie night tonight with my patron. So I don't think I'm actually have a ton of time to read today. So I'm going to try and pick like a really short book or a graphic novel or something like that. So the readathon we're going to participate in today is the Magical Readathon. So I love the Magical Readathon. I think it's pretty much one of the best, most immersive readathons out there. I participated in the Novice Path which was the last main round of the Magical Readathon, but I just have decided I can't like continue it. I just haven't got the time, which I'm really sad about, but we're gonna try today. Now, the way that Magical Readathon works, if you don't know, is you kind of pick a calling, like a job almost, and then you have to do certain exams to get that job. Now that's not what we're gonna be doing today. We're not gonna be picking a calling because we're not doing a readathon. We just need it to pick one book for us. So I haven't looked at the prompts yet. I guess we can just look at the prompts and pick a book based off one of them. Or maybe we can try and do like a book that fulfills a few prompts. Maybe we'll do that. So this is happening at the moment. The first round of exams is happening in April. Okay, what are our prompts? We have book featuring romance, quick read. Okay, well. <laughs> All of the books I'm reading this week are quick reads. I'm not going to be reading, don't think I'm reading like any full length, like not full length novels, but like long books in this video. They're going to be like 200 page books, every book in this video. Um, top of your to be read list. Okay, that could be like anything. Source of light on the cover. Word shadow in the title. Oh, book under 100 pages. I don't think I actually have many under 100 pages. Short story. Earth setting. Intimidating read. Mythology inspired. Book set in the future. Book featuring healers creature with claws on the cover. Huh. I don't just want to like use the prompt quick read or top of your TBR list because they could all, all be that. Do you know what I mean? I want some of the other ones. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I have an idea. Let me go look up the synopsis. Okay. I know what we're going to be reading. Okay. So we're going to be reading Emergency Skin by N.K. Jemison. This is under 100 pages. It's only like 40 pages. We're reading a quick book today. It's set on earth. It's set in the future. It's a quick read. I think that's all the ones. Oh, short story. It's a short story. It fulfills like five prompts. <laughs> I've connected the two dots. You didn't connect shit, but I've connected them. So this is N.K. Jemisin's short story in the Forward collection, which is like a selection of sci-fi novellas, essentially, or no novelettes. I don't know <laughs> what the correct terminology is. But I've read the first two. I've read Ark by Veronica Roth and 
Summer Frost by Blake Crouch and I gave them five stars and four stars. So I'm really excited for this. I'm really enjoying this collection. And N.K. Jemisin's and Andy Weir's were the two I'm most excited for. So I'm really excited to get to this point in the series. There's six in total. This is the third one. And I want to finish this series in like the next month or so. So that it's like, you know, off the list. And I'm really excited for this one. I think it's about a character going back to Earth and like I think humans have to flee Earth and it's like climate change ridden and it's like terrible and we've got a character going back there. This is perfect actually. We'll start off nice and easy today with Emergency Skin only being like 40 pages. I have the ebook and the audiobook if I want to listen to it. So I'm gonna head out on the walk and I will read the ebook probably like on the way there or something. Oh my god, what a great pick! Okay, so I just had a lovely walk. I'm knackered now though, I'm so tired. We did like, I think about 9K. It was a long walk, so I'm very tired, but I finished Emergency Skin. It wasn't hard, it's like 32 pages or something like that. And I'm gonna give it a 3.5 star actually. It's my lowest rated out of the collection so far, which really surprised me considering this was one of the ones I was most excited for. You are an individual sent from this world, Earth, no, planet, <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for? Like elite selection of Earth, elite, I'm using that in quotations, went and moved to when the Earth was dying and you're sent back to Earth because you need like samples from Earth, essentially. And the whole thing is told in second person, like um, one perspective in the fifth season by N.K. Jemison is, so it's all you do this, you do that, and it's the AI that's built into your brain talking to you. So you don't read any of what you say or what like, yeah, what anything of you say, but you read all of the AI's responses to you. It's like what you're experiencing basically is what you read. <laughs> Funnily enough, although you is meant to make it more personal, it just meant I felt a bit more detached from the story as a whole. I think the concept is great and where the concept goes and I think like it has a lot to say and there's a few little fun nods throughout the book. But I mean, it's 30 pages <laughs> and I feel like it could have been longer. The other two I've read were a little bit longer. Even if it's just 10 pages longer, I feel like it needed a bit more depth. I deserve more than this! And just the, the decision for it to be second person perspective, second, pers yeah. <laughs> I felt like I just didn't really connect to the story as a whole, which I'm really disappointed about because, like I said, this was this and Andy Weir's ones, and Andy Weir's one is really short as well. These were the two I was most excited for. I'm a bit not worried they're going to be my least favourite in the collection, but at least I'm halfway through it now. I'm halfway through the collection. It wasn't hard to read that today, but I was right. I didn't really have any time to read. I've got movie night with my patrons now, watching Knives Out, which I've never seen. I've actually never seen it, and everyone always pitches it to me because it's like murder mystery, so I'm really, really excited to watch that this evening. You know, I loved um, Ark by Veronica Roth so much because it really made me feel something in 40 pages. I think that one's about 40. It really made me feel an emotion and like feel very emotional and really connect to the characters and connect to the storyline. And it felt like a lot more happened and there was a bit more like depth to everything. Whereas this, I just felt ambivalent because it's an AI talking to you. And so it's very detached writing. Perhaps it's more that it's an AI 
like speaking to you that I felt that way rather than it being second person. Maybe I'm confusing the two, but um, yeah. <laughs> Has anyone got anything to say? I mean, it was good. Like I enjoyed so many aspects of it, but I, having had like a five and a four star in this collection so far and it being N.K. Jemisin, I was expecting more. I think it's giving me like a great, it's a great concept, right? It's a great idea for a novella. I think that's why it's been so successful because it's like, it's something unusual. It's something different and I thank it for that, but then I move on. <laughs> so I will see you in the morning tomorrow when it's time to pick our next book and our next readathon. Wake up! It's a motherfucking Monday! Morning, everyone! It's Monday morning, and I'm very excited for what we're gonna pick next! So, I, today, the readathon I'm gonna be participating in is a readathon that I co hosted, the Thousand Doors Readathon, which is generally, I mean, I know I'm biased, but like one of my favorite readathons ever. <laughs> so, if you don't know what it was, it's been a while actually since we ran around. We do need to run another one. You have reading prompts. And then what you think of that book <laughs> determines what read reading prompt you get next. And there's doors you go through and everyone has different prompts that they can get throughout the readathon. And I want to get a prompt that I never had for any of the readathons. Now, when we did the initial longer a thousand dollars readathon we did like duplicate some prompts just otherwise if we'd like made every path a new path we would have to have done like 400 prompts or something like that but when we did the smaller one because it's only after about three rounds it starts getting out of control logistically um when we did the smaller weekend one each path was completely individual so who you started with determined what prompts you get and like each new path was a new <laughs> thing if that makes sense it doesn't make any sense it's very hard to describe how do i explain it i never really got it emma did all the work logistically figuring that out so i'm gonna go to the weekend prompts the smaller one we did and i started with emma's prompt last time when i did it so i'm gonna start with tasman's prompt this time i'm not gonna do that prompt i'm gonna go to the end of the video and answer the question there based on the last book i read yesterday and that will determine what i read <laughs> okay so we'll just scrub through tasman's video sorry tasman so the question was what rating did you give your last book and we obviously didn't think about people who rated books 3.5 <laughs> although i did round up to a four in goodreads going with the four to five doesn't feel right i'm gonna go with the one to three because it was 3.5 so let's go with that one and see who i get <laughs> i'm so scared why am i scared Hello, oh, it's Emma. it is Emma from Drinking by My Shelf, and I'm sorry to hear that you didn't much enjoy the last book that you read, which we did fun. Let's okay. see if we can get you to have some better luck with prompt number two. Oh, I should say, each of the hosts have different themes for their prompts. My oh, theme yeah. throughout this readathon is going to be games. The so next fun. game that we are going to so play fun. is an old favourite of mine, Backpacker. Ooh, you can see how well loved and well used <laughs> this set is. The box is completely falling apart. This is a game that basically revolves around travelling the world, seeing loads of different sites, having different experiences. It's really good fun. I'm going to select a random card from here oh my and that's going to decide our next prompt. Oh my god. So, I'm going to close my eyes <laughs> and I'm going to pick... Egypt. Ooh. Okay, Emma. so there's actually loads of things we <laughs> could do with this prompt. So this Emma. is the country card for Egypt. So you could obviously read a book set in Egypt, oh read a book by God. an Egyptian author. It's also brown. All of the countries have different colours, so you could read a book with a brown cover. It's also with 100 points. This is one of the highest scoring cards in the game. So perhaps you might want okay. to read a five-star prediction, a book that you think is going to be one of your favourites. You can have a little look at the design of the card with pyramids in the background, the sphinx at the front. Maybe any of that will prompt you. Go wild. Go and enjoy your next book. Right. Um. <laughs> I was angry. I was angry. So the obvious thing to go with would be to read Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie. Like that would be like the first thing that pops into my head. But I'm actually reading that for a different video next week. Oh, can you believe it? So. I don't think I have any other books set in Egypt.
I've got to think. Let me like cut the cameras dead ass. Like, let me think for a bit. Okay, I know what we're doing. I know what we're doing. Okay, so we're partly gonna go with Emma's permission to pick like a five star prediction. This is definitely a five star prediction. Probably the book I wanna read most right now. Like if I wasn't doing this, I was like reading, you know, mood reading. This is probably the first book that I would pick up. And this is like a stretch, right? Are we all ready for a stretch? Right. Um, <laughs> I associate Egypt with when I used to like love history as a child, right? So in the UK, we have something called the Horrible Histories books. This, you guys are gonna clown me, but. <laughs> Uh, you guys go drag me for this, huh? Okay. I loved the whole history's books and the show when I was younger, and they do a lot about like ancient Egyptians, pharaohs, that kind of thing. And that was probably when I like consumed the most media about Egypt. And I, I associate with being a child and like learning about history. And also when I was a child, I liked fairy tales. And so <laughs> I'm gonna read A Spindle Splintered by Alex E. Harrow. Do I say that right? Spindle? Yes. Anyway, um, so many of you will know The Once and Future Witches was my second favourite book of last year and I've just been like, like hankering for more Alex E. Harrow writing. Like I think her writing is just the most beautiful lyrical stuff ever. And this is a retelling of Sleeping Beauty. It's super short, but I am so excited to read this. This is absolutely a five star prediction. I think I'm just gonna love it and like eat it up. So this is quite good because I've got quite a busy day today. I'm like running around different places. I've got to do some important bits of work. I need to finish Heartstopper this evening with my mum. So I feel like this is a good pick because it's only about 100 pages. There's illustrations and I'm very, very excited to read this. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I hope that isn't too much of a stretch. I feel like a five star prediction fits enough but then you got a little little added taste if you needed more from me. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> i'm gonna be honest i'm gonna be honest everyone I'm gonna be honest i didn't finish it yesterday oh. you're gonna burn in the flames of hell for this and i'm gonna make sure of it listen i like finished work i took tom home i made lunches for the next couple of days and made dinner last night and then me and my mom watched heartstopper and it was 10 o'clock so like sorry <laughs> We're still gonna read seven books in seven days, but like you can't tell me that uh, I had to read them all in <laughs> one day. No, I read like the first 50 pages. So I've read literally about half of it. It won't take me long to read the rest of it. I actually just remembered I have the audiobook for it on script. So I'm gonna listen to that. But I thought, you know, it's the morning. Good morning, everyone. Let's decide what we're gonna be reading today after we finished a spindle spin and we'll like read them together. Okay, that's the, the plan. The readathon that we are gonna be participating in today is Blackathon. This is like a Black History Month inspired readathon that takes place and it's it's always really great, really well organized. Again, a readathon uh, I've always wanted to participate in but never found the chance. But we're gonna be participating in today. So I haven't looked at the prompts. Let's go, let's go look at them. Okay, so, oh, I'm nervous. Oh, team. Lit to contemporary nonfiction book. Okay. I'm just like, oh, Throne and Horror. Duality of Vengeance Justice. This is hard. These are hard prompts. Mental health. Oh, romance. I don't read a lot of romance, so we're not going to read that. So this is team science fiction fantasy and there's a book with trans spectrum representation. I have it. We can read Pet. I believe this does follow a trans girl as it's like main protagonist. <gasps> this is like one of the three books I needed to read in this vlog. We hadn't read any of them yet and I was like starting to get a bit nervous. I was like, if I don't pick one of them today, it's gonna be shit. So we can read Pet, that's so great. Okay, so we will finish 
a spindle splintered. I will check in with you my thoughts when I finish that. And then we will read this. Now I have got time to read today. I need to edit a video today, probably up until like five-ish, but then at half seven tonight, I have got reading spirits for my patrons, which I have every week. And they're like one of my favorite points of the week. So tonight I'm not letting us chat, which usually we just chat for ages. <laughs> Today we have to we have to read. I'm gonna make us read and we will get through pet. I don't think it'll take me long. I have the audiobook for this as well, so I can make my way through it. Maybe when I'm making a thumbnail for tonight's upload and stuff. So how exciting. Let's go finish this and then read this today. Burn my quiche, and as per usual, I can have my quiche Wednesdays tomorrow for lunch. Hello. <laughs> you may have noticed it's the next day. <laughs> I just felt shit yesterday, you guys. I, okay. <laughs> I just feel like my health has been bad vibes in April. Everything else in my life has been pretty good, but like, I was, I had a really bad cold knocked me out for a week, like three weeks ago. Then I sprayed my ankle. Then I was okay for a week. And then the past couple of days, I've just been exhausted all the time. Like falling asleep in the middle of the day. Like not even meaning to, just falling asleep. I think you can tell by my face that I'm extremely tired today. <laughs> but I feel like this video is a fail. I wanted all of the books to be contained in their days. But anyway, let's chat about what I've done. So I finished A Spindle Splintered. I really enjoyed this. So this is like a Sleeping Beauty retelling where we're following a girl who has this like condition from birth that means that she probably probably won't live long. There's no one, no one has ever lived beyond 22 with this condition and she's turning 21. And she kind of accidentally goes into this like sleeping beauty world and hijinks ensue from there. And this book pretty much did what I expected in like really subverting and doing like a feminist retelling and like, you know, really mixing up those old fairy tales. And I recently read Disfigured with my patrons for our patron book club. And actually a lot of us didn't really love it. I mean, without getting too much, like I could talk for ages about it, but it was kind of like half memoir half factual and the two bled into each other too much. I think we all found pretty much all of us didn't love it. But having read that and having read about kind of the history of fairy tales and like the the phases that fairy tales have gone through, like Sleeping Beauty has been kind of rewritten and reshaped by so many different kind of groups and people over the years. I found that very interesting how that was played into. Our protagonist is kind of like obsessed with Sleeping Beauty and other fairy tales, has a degree in fairy tales and so speaks a lot about that, about the different variations of these stories and how they've been molded over time. And I found that very interesting. I found the kind of like tragic hopefulness in this is a is a trope I love and I, an idea I love. I love like Courtney Summers does this at the end of her books. Like I love like a hopefulness in the in the face of everything being shit. <laughs> And I thought this book, without spoiling the ending, I feel like it dealt with our character's disability very well, kind of giving the audience what they wanted from the story whilst also, uh, how can I say this without spoiling anything? Not, not dealing in some kind of tropes that have existed in the past due to disability. So I gave it a four star. It wasn't quite a five star. I don't really have anything wrong with it. Like sometimes when I give five, four stars, there's like a little something I can critique and I can't really critique anything about this. I thought it was really well written. I thought it was fun. I thought it was joyful, but like sad at the same time. I did feel like Alexi Harris writing wasn't quite what I remembered from uh, Once a Future Witches, perhaps because that's more historical. And then our protagonist in this is more like present day lingo. How do you do fellow kids? What? I think that is the kind of drawback for me. It wasn't quite the kind of magical, like gorgeous writing that I was hoping from it. But I'm still really excited to continue on with this series and I had a lot of fun reading it. So yeah, okay. So <laughs> I am halfway through Pet. I got halfway through Pet yesterday. So we're gonna finish this today. We're not gonna pick our next book until I finished this 
this afternoon sometime. I need to do a bit of video editing to edit TBR Cluedo this morning. I am enjoying this. So we're following Pet, who is a trans girl in this kind of future Earth world, and there is no monsters in this city anymore. Monsters have been banished, but monsters aren't like creatures, they're like bad people. So like the police or billionaires are referred to as monsters. And then a creature arrives called Pet, who tells Jam that something is living, a monster is at her friend Redemption's house hurting him. And so Jam is trying to help find out what that is and try to end it. And I am enjoying this. I'm really enjoying the audiobook. The audiobook has all like the accents and I think that really helps when reading it. Because in this in the book, when Pet speaks to Jam in her head. There's no speech marks. And I just really am enjoying the audiobook. I think it is helping. I'm not like a hundred percent. It's probably like another four star at the moment. This this vlog has been very one note, but <laughs> I am enjoying it. I feel like I'm gonna have more thoughts on it once we get to the end and kind of see how this this plays out because I've spent a lot of time getting used to the world and kind of this future setting and what all different linguistics mean. But I'm really enjoying I don't know how to put this, but like the style of storytelling in this, I think it's a very unique style of storytelling. The kind of just the way the characters speak to each other and the way that scenes are structured. I don't really know how to describe it. And I, a parcel just arrived for me, which I thought we would open together. I think I know what this is. It's from Canongate, but I'm not 100% sure. So let's open it quickly. Cause I feel like if it is what I think it is, I need it right now. I'm not waiting to open it. <laughs> Okay. Oh my god, what? This is like a little... Okay, hang on, let's like look through this in stages. <laughs> so they got in contact with me and asked if I would like a copy of The Comfort Book by Matt Haig. The Midnight Library I absolutely loved when I read it, and I think this is a collection of consolations learned in hard times and suggestions for making bad days better. Yeah, good. That's cute. You know you're so clever. Oh my god, you're so clever. So I'm really excited for this. I, it's like kind of, there's some really short sections. Um, and it's kind of just like little anecdotes. There's some longer sections as well of, you know, positive thinking and getting yourself out of thinking in a rut. And I think this kind of stuff can be really helpful. And I, I do tend to prefer self-helpy stuff, if you can call it that, that's more like grounded and, um, realistic and like really stuff that anyone can implement and that's what I think this is so I'm super excited that they've sent me this but they also sent like a self-care package so let's like <laughs> let's like dive into what it is okay so first we have this gorgeous mug excuse me hang on I wasn't expecting this a gorgeous mug oh my god look at her that's so pretty we have a candle soy lavender candle from vegan bunny oh that smells so good that smells like um Tom's house. <laughs> That's so cute. Okay, I love candles. Oh, we have some tea. We have lemon, ginger, and manuka honey, and supreme matcha green. I don't typically drink tea, but I may try the lemon, ginger, and manuka honey, and maybe, maybe I'll try both. Who knows? Who knows? I'm like a new person. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna cry. What is all of this? Okay, made by Cooper's Calm Atmosphere Mist. Get out. <gasps> <laughs> That smells really good. Oh my god. Eight vegan chocolate Easter eggs with a soft center caramel. Ooh! <laughs> Extra spicy sauce. That's going to strain my basket. <laughs> okay, well, guess I have no choice but to try one. I guess I have no choice. What can I do? Oh my god. They look very interesting. Okay, let's try. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Someone's gonna have to hide them from me. That is so good. Then they sent some matches. How cute. Some safety matches for the candle. And then we've got a face mask. Maybe I'll put this on tonight. I love a good face mask. Oh my god, thank you so much for sending this to me. This is like, when they said like a little self-care package, I thought it'd be like a face mask and some tea, not like a mug, a mist, a candle. I am so excited, thank you so much. And I'm very excited to read the comfort book. I feel like this kind of stuff is always really helpful to read. So maybe I'll read this like over the next couple of weeks, just like really slowly. And I'll let you know to wrap up what I think about it. It's like a playlist in it. This looks so much fun. So thank you so much. I am gonna go edit and then I'm gonna go what am I doing? Oh, reading pet. <laughs> and then we'll come back this afternoon before the sprints, hopefully sometime, to figure out the other book we're going to be reading today. It's also Friday, so it's the weekend, so cheer up. Okay.
So it turns out when I said we were going to read um, the <laughs> seven books in seven days, those days did not need to be consecutive. <laughs> It turns out, by the way, my neighbours are playing music really loud, so apologies if you can hear it. Um, turns out I was so tired on Tuesday because I had a virus of some sort, and immediately after I spoke to you on Wednesday, I came down very unwell. <laughs> I've had like a stomach bug, and um, I've also had like a headache in the base of my head into my neck that's been genuinely one of the most painful headaches I've had consistently since midday Wednesday and like pain because I haven't touched it and I've been going insane so we ruled out Thursday right Thursday I was not capable of reading we're just pretending that day didn't exist <laughs> the rules don't apply so we had four days right four active Sunday Monday Tuesday Wednesday I finished on Wednesday whilst I was ill pet I think I was halfway through this when I spoke to you about it and Mm, I didn't connect emotionally to this in the way that I think everyone else did. Now bear in mind, I was unwell. I was not in a good mood. So I think that that has played into it, but I'm giving it a 3.5, leaning towards a three. And I was like looking at everyone's reviews and I was like, I'm the only one out here. <laughs> I think it, it was a really good book and the way that the themes of, you know, child abuse, um, that this ends up focusing on were handled very, very well. I can see myself really loving a Kweke Meze's adult fiction, but for me, this just felt like very simplistic, very like middle grade, but it wasn't middle grade. I don't mind things feeling like middle grade if they are middle grade, but it felt too simplistic. I had issues with the pacing and I just didn't connect emotionally. I didn't really actually get emotional to what happened when you should really get emotional at that. And listen, I get emotional at everything. <laughs> I get emotional at things you don't need to get emotional at. So I'm very disappointed <laughs> because everyone has told me I'm going to love it. It's the best book they've read all year. They're obsessed. And I just didn't feel that way about it. Now, again, please bear in mind, I was unwell. Okay, so like that could have that could have come into it. But um, yeah, I liked the audiobook. Uh, it just felt too short as well. I feel like for the story that's so interesting, there's a lot of world building. There's this idea of monsters and angels and the town not having any monsters anymore and how that develops is very interesting. But I, I think I would have liked a longer book. Oh my God, they're paying One Direction. When I first saw you from across the room. Anyway, I was just disappointed and then we're gonna forget about it. I read it on Wednesday. So that means we finished three books. <laughs> in the first four days of this. So we need to read four books in the last three days of this. So today is Friday, as you would have seen. I'm not gonna read two books today because it's now like five o'clock, <laughs> but I'm gonna read a book today and then two books. Either. I think probably tomorrow I'll read two books. I feel like it. Um, so let's get into what we're gonna be doing today. The readathon that we are gonna be participating in today is the Buzzwordathon run by Kayla. Now she's done this for many years and I've participated a little bit in previous years, but I haven't done anything for this year yet. So let me screen record. I saved, I went and saved the graphic for like what the prompts were, but I haven't looked at the prompts yet. I haven't looked at the prompts. So let's do that now. Now I would ideally, I would like to pick April's or May's prompts because this video is coming out in May. It's almost May. <laughs> so April or May's prompts. If I can't do that, we'll do any of the prompts, because I know a lot of people just like try to hit them all throughout the year. They don't necessarily do them in the month. Basically the idea of Buzzwordathon is there's a buzzword or like a buzz theme. <laughs> buzz theme -a -thon. The book title has to have that theme in it. It'll make sense when we look at it. So, ooh, okay. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. So April, big and little. Hmm, I don't like that. <laughs> I have big little lies, but that's long. I'm assuming you can have like other size words. So tiny, I have tiny pretty things. Tiny pretty, dumb. Let's look, May, directions. Okay, hang on. I wanna go, I'm gonna go look at, oh! <laughs> I just dropped my earphones. I'm gonna go look at Kayla's video because I wanna know what is included in directions. Is it just north, south, east, west? Or is there left, right? Like, what is what are we including in in directions? Okay, moving on to May. What is May? What's May? May is directions. I got this uh, suggested, and I thought it was so fun. So you okay. can do north, south, east, west. Um, exit west, for example, would be a good one. But you can also make it like up down, left, right. It can also be part of a word. It doesn't have to be the whole thing. So. 
Southern Book Club's guide for slaying vampires. Okay, 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 okay. Um. Mm, I know a lot of things, but I don't know about that. I'm not sure why. I have Down and Out in Paris and London by George Orwell, which is short, but I don't know if I'm in the mood for that. I'm not really in the mood for that. <laughs> Down, up. Uh... Oh, 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 I know what we're doing. I know what we're doing. Okay. I'm coming to you with a pitch, right? If up and down can be classed as directions, I think Kayla would accept over. Over? Up, down, over? Right? <laughs> I think that's a direction. So I'm, I'm counting it, I'm counting it. We're gonna read Over the Woodward Wall by A. Deborah Baker, AKA Sean McGuire. Um, I'm happy with theirs. Oh my God, I hope we're all counting this. Over is a direction. Over, up, down, same thing, same diff. Same diff. <laughs> I'm very happy because I said at the start of the video, this is one of the ones I wanted to try and get to because it was on a TBR, Cluedo TBR. So this is a short story from Middle Game, <laughs> the book that's referenced in that and Sean McGuire has written it. Now, because it's about kids going into another world, I think we're following two kids who go into this like magical world. It does have Wayward Children vibes, which is one of Sean McGuire's like other series but I feel like it's not going to be quite like that because otherwise what's the point so it must be a little bit different so I'm intrigued I'm intrigued so we're going to go read this I feel like I'll definitely be able to read this today I think I have the audiobook as well on script so let's get into it how come the stars come to shine when it's dark so far away, show us where we are What makes the sun go to sleep every night And what's it dreaming of? I finished it! <laughs> I'm too tired to talk about it now But I'll talk to you about it in the morning But I finished it! Saturday! <laughs> They're f what are Saturdays are for the... Saturday! No! Morning! Can we just talk about them? You can't really see them, but look at Lux. He's truly living his best life. <laughs> anyway, good morning, good morning. I finished Over the Woodward Wall last night. Are we proud of me for actually finishing a book? <laughs> I mean, it's, but this vlog has been a mess. You don't understand. I've been excited for this vlog for months. And it was kind of going to be like a, like, let me take you along with me in my life. Let me, let's, like, let's do like a bit of a life vlog as well. Like, I haven't lived a life this week because I've been throwing up. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna give Over the Woodward Wall four stars. I'm gonna give it four stars. Now, it had the magic of a Sean Maguire book, but I think it, like, it simultaneously felt like it was written by Sean Maguire and written by someone else, and it's supposed to, right? Like, it's a, written by a character, and I thought you could really tell that and that that was very cleverly done. I just didn't love it as much as Middle Game, which was, like, a longer, like, epic book, or there's something about the Wayward Children series and world that now feels very special to me, and it just didn't, like, match up to that. <laughs> But I still really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun reading it. The audiobook is amazing. The audiobook narrator is so, 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 so good at like doing all these voices. So basically we're following Avery and Zib who have normal lives and go over the Woodward Wall into this world of the up and under and it's them trying to find their way home, but it's very difficult. I would say this is like a combination of Narnia and the Wizard of Oz. I think people often compare Wayward Children to Narnia because it like, kids going through doors <laughs> but I don't really see it but this definitely feels like that and Wizard of Oz where like they're walking along this road and there's so many different characters magical characters from this world like dipping in and out of the story with them and meeting them and helping them for like a short period of time and then they leave and then it's like a new character I really liked all the different characters that we met it's much more like nonsensical than Wayward Children it's very different like people I think people often think they're quite similar because it's like kids going into other worlds but this is much more like nonsensical bending the rules of logic I mean Wayward Children does that but not in the style of storytelling this does do that it's a very weird fun style of storytelling tell you what they told okay me. i'm feeling weird right now i'm feeling like so weird it took me back to just being a child like i feel like i was watching wizard of oz again which i loved i loved wizard of oz when i was a kid and it just i think it was really good at like getting that childhood nostalgia can we just talk about how i've started three different series in this vlog 
that's a problem. But I am excited to carry on with this series. I don't know how many it's going to be. I have the second one. The third one comes out at the end of this year. I don't know when the rest of it is continuing. But um, yeah, it didn't touch Wayward Children for me and it didn't touch Middle Game, but it was a fun read. I'm glad I finally got around to it and I really enjoyed it and I thought it was a really vivid, magical world. I haven't really got anything bad to say about it other than Sean Maguire has such high standards for me. Like I expect so much and it wasn't, I didn't love it as much as the other stuff, essentially. So today I would like to try and read two books if we can. I mean I could tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm probably a bit freer but I would like to try and do it today. And you guys I'm really in the mood to read a graphic novel but I don't know if we're going to be able to. <laughs> Depends what prompts we get. But the first readathon we're going to be doing today, hopefully we'll get around to two, if not we'll do two tomorrow, is Book of Alathon! I printed out the board from September last year, I think this one was. So this is run by Becca from Becca and the Books and obviously she does Bookopoly as like her TBR game and this is a readathon based off of that. There's a, like, there's a new one happening next month which I am participating in and she did put out the first couple prompts for that so I thought should we do that? But then I thought no, I want to play the board again. So we're gonna play the board game and it's gonna determine what we read. Right, let's see how many we roll. I am literally so nervous. Oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> I promise you that landed in my lap on a five. So we've got nine. Okay, okay, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Monsters? <laughs> um, okay, 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 hang on. I'm I'm justifying it for myself. I don't care. Okay. So, I think <laughs> we can count anything as a monster, anything you would dress up for Halloween as. And Sheets is about a ghost, right? I think it's a nice ghost. <laughs> I think it's a kind ghost, but it's still a ghost. And I think we can count a ghost as a monster, okay? Boy, did I cheat like mug. So yeah, we're gonna read Sheets and I'll probably check in with you once I've finished it because it won't take me long. <laughs> Okay, so I finished Sheets. This was 100% like the perfect thing for me to read at the moment. It was just what I needed. I had so much fun reading it. I feel like I need to read graphic novels so much more. <laughs> I'm gonna give it four stars. Um, I think it's like a maybe 4.5 virgin, but I'm gonna give it a four. It was just such a lovely story. Yeah, we're following Marjorie, who is basically running the family laundromat. She's only 13, but her mum passed away last spring. So she's like in middle school, I think, and like just trying to like get through middle school whilst also like running this family laundromat. And it's really hard. There's like, there's adults in this that are really mean to her. Like there's adults that are her enemy and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Why are these adults so horrible? But this ghost called Wendell, this is Wendell, um, ends up coming across the laundromat and being there. I just thought it was really touching and really gorgeous and I really loved the characters. It's got a lot of like blue and pink and purple colour tones and I just thought it looked so beautiful. It's also I believe set in like the 80s and I just thought that was a really fun setting for a graphic novel. And you know just like our main character dealing with grief and Wendell dealing with grief in a way and like bullies and like we also have like this storyline of this mean guy <laughs> who's trying to set up a yoga retreat. It was very fun. It was very humorous. I feel like it had like a, a fun sense of humor as a book and I just really enjoyed it. I'm so glad I finally got around to it because I've had this I think I've owned it for about a year now and it makes me want to read graphic novels more because I never read them and then I read them and I love them. <laughs> she's, oh, she's so fucking stupid. The second readathon of the day because the day is, the night is young. <laughs> what time is it? I think it's, it's about three o'clock. So I do have some family stuff that we're doing this evening. So 
we'll see how long the book we end up reading is <laughs> whether I finish it but we'll try to make good progress to whatever book we end up picking today so the next video thumb we're going to do is spring fling a ween which is actually happening as we speak it's happening right now this is hosted by Gavi and Olivia and it's like they do lots of like a ween <laughs> readathons um, and this is the one that's running at the moment and I really want to participate so I haven't looked at what the prompt is we're going to watch Gabby's like announcement video um, and find out what the prompts are but I assume we're going to be reading like a thriller or a horror so if we can the only book that I said at the start of this that I want to read that we haven't got to is The Woods Are Always Watching which I have been putting off for quite some time now this is like a little bit longer it's about 220 pages but um we'll see if we can fit this in so let's find out what the prompts are but I'm really excited about these prompts and I think they're so cute and perfect for this like spring kind of vibe because the first prompt is going to be to read a book with pink or yellow on the cover okay because personally when I think of spring I think of like yeah, pinks okay, and yellows okay, and like okay. the pastels you know and if you're thinking to yourself what kind of books can you make fit into this color palette you would actually be surprised how many thriller and horror books so have need a pink thriller or, or yellow. horror book with pink oh yeah okay i already decided i even know okay let me look let's see if in the description they got the other <laughs> prompts mm, yeah i don't really have any backlist a little horror I want to read. Okay, we've decided what we're reading. I know what I'm reading. I know what I'm reading. Let me go fetch it. It's a bit longer. It's going to be the longest book we read in this vlog, but I feel good because I've got like today and half of tomorrow to read it. I'm going to read, it not only has pink or yellow, it has pink and yellow. I'm going to read uh, Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. Um, so I've really wanted to read this since I got it. I got it in book of the month. What month was it? <laughs> I can't remember. January, I feel like? It was very early. This is a thriller about a group of friends who go to this island and then one of them goes missing, one of them turns out dead. I think it's quite campy and fun while also being like a thriller. It's been compared to And Then There Were None, <laughs> but I don't like it when things are compared to And Then There Were None because uh, I didn't really love And Then There Were None. I don't think it is going to be spot on necessarily but yeah i'm really really excited the island is a desolate spot with a mysterious his history of shipwrecks cannibalism and even rumors of murder it's a perfect destination for the most adventurous traveler to escape everything even the truth okay i'm really really excited we're gonna read this it's gonna be a bit longer how long is it i'm guessing like 300 pages oh it's literally just 300 pages so it's not too long so i feel like it's within my wheelhouse to read like at least half of this tonight and check in with you and then we'll read the rest tomorrow. That's the plan and we're gonna do it. And I'm very excited because oh, I haven't read, this is a 2022 release, isn't it? I've only read three so far this year. So I was getting a bit nervous. <laughs> anyway, we're reading it regardless because it is pink and yellow and this is perfect for this challenge. Here I am, here we are. Yes, another week. Good morning, everyone. Um, Listen, it's first thing in the morning. <laughs> don't need to discuss the way I look. But I'm halfway through Reckless Girls and I am enjoying it. Like, here's the thing. It's a very easy read. Like, it's the, one of the most, like, easy thriller mysteries that I've read in a long while. It's, like, so easy to... <laughs> can I say easy again? <laughs> it's so easy to just kind of, like, dive through and read very fast. So, basically, our main character is called Lux, which is my cat's name. <laughs> is it a coincidence? Is it a coincidence? I ask you. Is it a coincidence? <laughs> he is named after a Pokemon though, to be fair. And it's her I hate when my bun just like disappears behind my head. Do you want like <laughs> Oh, let me tie my hair up in a ponytail. Hold on. Her and her boyfriend Nico get asked by these two girls and Nico has a boat and they get kind of like hired by these two girls to take them out to this like deserted island essentially where like many years ago people were stranded on it and died but now like obviously they can go there with their boat what i like about this some like mystery thrillers you dive into like the craziness straight away what, I, what did i read recently where i didn't like that it was like that like it was immediately there was no build up with these characters. It was just immediately shit hitting the fan. Whereas shit still hasn't hit the fan halfway through. They encountered two other people on the island. So there's now six of them. And it's just been a lot. We have actually multiple timelines, but I'm enjoying them both equally, which I don't usually do. So I think they're both interesting. So we've got the present day timeline with them on the island. And then we've got 
past timelines for both Lux and Nico, and is it Emma and Brittany, I think, who are the two girls that they took with them. Um, we're having like backstories of like their history that brings up a lot of questions as to how people know each other and people's motivations. And it's just kind of like building the tension of them all on this isolated island together where anything can happen, people not trusting one another, relationships starting to fracture. And I just really like that in my mysteries and thrillers. I think it's like, I really like building that kind of tension before we get into the craziness. I feel like the second half is going to get kind of crazy, but the first half has been pretty chill, just us learning about the characters and tension kind of seeping into the cracks in all of their relationships. So I'm just enjoying it. It's not going to be like a five star, I don't think, unless it goes like crazy. But I think it's like an easy to read fun thriller. I already know, by the way, the last book in this vlog, I can't remember, I do not know what readathon I'm doing, but I haven't looked at the prompts, but I don't want to read something very long. <laughs> I'm kind of feeling a bit read out, like a bit like burnt out with reading and I just want to read something really short. So maybe another one of the forward collection would be fun if we can fit that. We'll have a look and see um, when we get to the end. But yeah, really enjoying this and I'm glad that I'm reading it. And how perfect was it for the prompt? Yellow and pink. I mean, come on. Right. So this book is crazy. <laughs> I was ooing. I was awing. I was wincing. I was LOLing quite heartily. Like actual insanity. <laughs> it's crazy, it's crazy, it's crazy. I'm gonna give it four stars. Here's the thing, I read this so quickly. I think I was reading like 150 pages an hour. Like I was reading it so, so fast. It is so compulsively readable. It is so easy to read. I really feel like that was what I needed at the moment. So I feel like it kind of gave me what I needed. It reminds me of The Last where there's this really great atmosphere built. It's very like high tension. And then the last 50 pages is just fucking crazy. And you're like, <laughs> do I think the ending is very good? No. <laughs> But did I have such a great time reading it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Do I think it's the best book ever? No. Do I think it's a super fun thriller? Yes. This is the kind of book, I don't want to say trashy, <laughs> but it's the kind of book that would be perfect to like take on holiday with you, not just because it's told on like a tropical island. It's the perfect thing that's fun and easy to read, you know, read by the pool, not a lot of thinking involved, just pick it up whenever you can, dive straight back into the story. And I think it's really great for that purpose or like, you know, want to read in one sitting on a summer's day or do you know what I mean? It's perfect for that kind of setting. I don't think this is going to be many people's favourite book, but do I think a lot of people are, having a, are going to have a good time reading it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's the duality of this book. I really did enjoy it. I really, I did enjoy it. I I can't pretend I didn't. I thought the flashbacks in time for all the different characters worked so well. The dual timeline, we know usually I dislike that, but we still had one timeline which felt like the, the real one, the main one, and the stuff in the past was kind of just to inform us. There are a few plot holes that I'm, I'm kind of figuring out. I'm a bit confused. <laughs> There's a few pl plot holes where you're like, that don't make no sense. <laughs> Me trying to explain the plot holes. <laughs> but yeah, it was a fun read. One of the funnest, kind of campy, silly thrillers I've read in a long time. I think this deserted island is a really great setting. Is it a retelling of Agatha Christie uh, and then there were none? No, it's really not. Like, it doesn't have that... Um, in and in the Wanan, like characters keep getting killed off kind of periodically. And that's what I think the truest retellings of and then the Wanan do, and I don't like that. So I actually like when books aren't strict retellings. This is not a retelling. Maybe it takes some inspiration, but it's just used. The Agatha Christie line has just been thrown in to try and get the book to sell more. So I'm kind of all read out, guys. I'm gonna be honest. I'm not in the mood for reading now. <laughs> I don't know, I just wanna like do nothing with my family. <laughs> so we're, I'm gonna read a short book. So we're gonna go to the Clear Your Shit Readathon, which I've always wanted to do. I think it's like an annual one. And it's really cool because there's like a narrator who narrates the readathon, who's like this sarcastic character. I just love the idea behind it. Okay, we've got shortest book and we've got smallest book. Okay, 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 okay. I think the shortest book on my TBR is Randomized by Andy Weir, but that is the last book in this forward collection that I've been reading. And I like to read them in order, even though there's no rhyme or reason to it because they're not related. You don't have to read them in order. I want to read them in order. So we're going to read, I think the next one is You Have Arrived at Your Destination by 
Amor Towels, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, I've never read anything by him, but I've always wanted to. So we're gonna read this one. It's gonna take us like 20 minutes. <laughs> but then we're done and we've read seven books in seven days. Kind of, kind of. <laughs> So, I just finished, what was it called again? <laughs> you have arrived at your destination by Amor Taos. So it's this new, like, ultra advanced fertility lab that our character is visiting, where not only can you maybe pick stuff like your child's gender or like their eye color or whatever, but they basically predict what the contours, that's what they call them, of your child's life is gonna be. like what kind of person they'll be, what kind of temperament, what kind of career, stuff like that. And he gets presented with like three different possibilities his wife has picked out of the person their child could be. Now, I did find this one very interesting. I really liked the section at the fertility clinic. <laughs> I can't fucking speak. But I did feel like uh, the section when he'd left it was not as strong. It was kind of boring and like the characters are speaking in metaphors and I was like, listen, we only have 50 pages here to get to know each other and for the story to go bish bash bosh. Let's, let's like move it on up and like <laughs> speak a bit more clearly. So I'm gonna give it a three overall. I, I feel like it is, I think it's got the lowest rating out of all the collections and I can see why. I, I, here's the thing, Amor Taos is not a sci-fi author. Um, he writes like, I think like historical fiction kind of stuff. And you could tell that because this wasn't very sci-fi, other than the advances in the, in the fertility clinic, there wasn't much else in the world or anything else in the world that was different to our life essentially. And so this was much more focused on humanity and human nature and like, yeah, just the human side of this stuff, which was interesting, but I feel like for me, it feels out of place with the rest of the collection so far. I did enjoy it. I had like a good reading experience reading it, but once I finished it, I was like, huh, like, is that it? Like, is that it? I was saying a potential risk because they're overweight. It's claimed that they're more prone to heart attacks. And is that it? Do you know what I mean? So I enjoyed, I really enjoyed the part of the fertility clinic. I thought it was really interesting. I really liked the way it was written. So I'm very excited. I own, is it The Lincoln Highway by Amor Towers? I always wanted to buy A Gentleman in Moscow, if that's what it's called. Um, I remember being in like, um, a <laughs> bookstore in Florida and wanting to buy it like years and years and years ago. So I'm excited about his writing because I really like the writing. I just don't feel like it worked as part of the collection and as a short story. Anyway, that brings us to an end of this vlog. Oh, I just knocked the table. I'm scared that this vlog is gonna be long. I don't personally really like doing vlogs longer than like 35 minutes. I don't think anyone's gonna want to watch them. So if you've made it to the end, thank you so much. Um, but I'm so glad I did this. I'm now only three books behind schedule because obviously time moves. <laughs> so I'm only three books behind schedule. My reading goal, which will definitely catch up to in the next couple of days. That's the best it's been since like mid-January. Like once I got past three books behind schedule, I never got back to it. So I'm very happy that we're at that point. I feel like it's kind of reached my goal. I'm not as anxious about my reading goal anymore. It finally feels like it could be a possibility. So yeah, I feel very happy and we read some good books. It was pretty one note though. It was a lot of like 3.5s, 4s, no five star if I remember correctly, but I had fun reading a lot of the books I read and I'm glad that I finally got on round to them. If you've gotten to the end, oh my God, what do I want you to comment? Oh, comment one of the pink flower emojis for Reckless Girls, because I really like that cover and how it tied into the prom. So comment that down below. Let me know um, how you're doing on whatever your reading goal of the year is. It doesn't have to be numerical, like any other reading goals you had. I would love to know how you're doing on them. Also, let me know what your favorite readathon you've ever participated in was and why. I'd love to know those things down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!